So scrubby bars or not scrubby bars? What's your preference? I'm a sucker for an exfoliating bar. Like I use exfoliating shower soaps uh, more often than anyone that doesn't have like the awesome scrubby removing your skin and doing all the things soaps in general across the board. So that's my preference. And we are making a scrubby bar today. And it's one that you've seen before, but we are changing up the recipe and doing it a little bit different. So before I get into what that is, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And today is day 245 of 365 days of soap, and we are remaking the Whetstone Bar. Now, this is actually for a wholesale account, so they're stocking the soap in their shop, which is cool. So I did change the design a little bit. I did keep the scent blend, the beautiful sandalwood, but I also changed some of the ratios and some of the scrubby bits, as well as a couple of the oils that we used from the last Whetstone Bar, just to play with really upping the lather because when you have things like pumice powder, pumice sand in a soap that's meant to be super duper scrubby to, you know, get the oil and the grease and everything off of like mechanics hands, essentially, it can tend to kill the lather a little bit. And so I did want to play with some different um, oils and butters as well as the ratios to really make sure we get a really big bubble out of this one. And it's, you know, delightful. So we're going to talk about all of that in the video. So let's go check that out. So the remaking of the whetstone soap. Now we did this very early on the channel because the whetstone bar, it is meant to be a bar used by, you know, gardeners, I guess, but specifically for, you know, mechanics and all that jazz. People who get their hands super duper dirty with all of the oily, greasy things that you would find in a mechanic shop, really. So this is a mechanic soap. And this is actually for a wholesale client, this particular batch. And I wanted to play with the oil ratios as well, as well as the design a little bit, just to make sure that it has a really incredible bubble right off the bat. And yeah, you're not emulsified, keep going. Because the thing about putting in pumice sand and pumice powder, both can actually make the lather kind of kind of sparse. And so I didn't, want that to be the issue. I don't really want any person that is, you know, using this to soap up after working on cars to have to work too terribly hard to get a good lather. And that's actually especially important when you are considering someone using your soap while their hands are covered in grease. Because, you know, the, the grease, the oil, right? That actually yes it contributes to moisture but if your batches are not if your soaps are not dialed in enough you can that can actually be well i mean just in normal circumstances if you have oil on your hands you can uh find that the lather is kind of lacking and so i changed the ratios up a bit with this one so we have uh actually this one is a 50 percent coconut oil blend a 30% Babasu oil blend just to help the bar hardening as well as the moisturizing and then the rest is olive oil so that's it that is the whole last batch that's everything that's going into it it's a three oil you know soap and I am doing that so you get the gentle cleansing from the olive oil as well as the really super big bubble from the coconut oil 
without it being too drying, which is where the babassu oil as well as the olive oil come into play. And then for the design, I have switched it up a little bit and I'm creating more of an actual like whetstone look with it. So we will have the top part will be the light gray and the bottom part will be a black with the activated charcoal. The kaolin clay has been dispersed into the scent blend for this and the scent blend is the same scent that I used for the whetstone back at the beginning of the channel which is a delightful sandalwood blend. So it's uh, sandalwood, it's orange, it's um, ylang ylang and a little bit of eucalyptus. It's a very sexy blend. I love this. And it is, you know, delightful. It's a very much unisex scent, so it totally works out for that. But, so same scent blend, just a different um, oil ratio to create a bigger bubble that will hopefully combat any sort of issues that may exist within, again, approaching the, a bar of soap with existing greasy hands or with all of the uh, exfoliants that exist within the batch already. Now, this will be, since we are doing a two layer, I for the most part don't want don't want the uh, activated charcoal portion to fall too terribly much into the sort of gray blue portion. So I am taking the stick blender back to that to mix everything up and get it nice and thick and ready for pouring so we don't have any breakthrough problems with the second layer of the black. And you know, so now that's done and let's go pour this thing and see what we're working with. So on to the pour and these particular molds, God, it's so weird. I am going to be doing in the next couple weeks a video about you know, like the things that you need when you start out and the things that you super don't. And this particular mold would definitely qualify for the things that you super don't. Because the only thing that I've ever used this mold for is this right here, right here. This is it. Just this soap, this one soap. Granted, I pour this soap a lot, but like, I have so many, many silicone molds, like in all shapes and sizes, you guys, like it's, it's insane. And, uh, the only thing that I use this particular mold for is, is this right here, the whetstone. That is all I've ever used this mold for. And I don't like that. That really bothers me. So yeah, you know, I mean, best pro tip ever. Think about molds that can be used for multiple pours because it has literally just been this the entire time I've ever owned these molds. Just this soap right here. That's all. And I mean, that's fine because the molds, I don't know, I got them off of Amazon and they were like $7 a piece or something. So it's fine. It's not a big deal. It's not expensive, but it's a... Uh, it's just annoying to have them in my multiple big box o silicone molds and those you will see that video in a few weeks the number of things that i have found that are not necessary at all at all in the soaping world just you don't you don't need this you, you do not need this actually you could cut a uh brambleberry has those silicone like 10 inch heavy duty molds that are like wider than they are long. Well, I mean, not wider than they are long, whatever. Wider than they are tall, maybe. And you could actually cut those just in half and three inches long. Use the molds for multiple things because this is ridiculous. The amount of mold, I am not kidding you. I have you know those those Ikea like Kallax systems, right? I have one of those that is a six foot by six foot sectional. It's huge, right? And half of that sectional is just filled with boxes that are labeled molds. I have, and I don't use 95% of them. And again, I use this one enough that I guess it's like, I guess they're fine. Just 
have some more creativity in your soap making world and don't buy all of the molds because you, you got this mold for this one specific purpose. Guess what? You're never going to use it again. If it's like a one-off for a special order, you will never use that again. I have a, a Mickey and Minnie Mouse mold thing that I bought for bath bombs when soap and Kila number two was in kindergarten last year just for a special request from their te from her teacher and I have literally never used that that sense because you know copyright and Disney and who wants to get sued like it's just yes so these guys are ready to go into the oven BC pop So this is definitely not a cut. This is more of just a uh, a plop, really. And like this stupid teeny tiny batch of all of this, it's they're so. This is just for the video. I actually have ten more of these. So back to me, bitching about how many molds I have. I have a lot of molds, and this is this could have easily been achieved with the brambleberry heavy duty. 10 inch by three and a half, whatever. But they are super beautiful. Like they, they look great. The actual performance on these bars, absolutely phenomenal. I really do love the increase in the coconut oil and the babasu into this because they are really big bubble, which is great when you, again, when you have a, a soap that has a lot of um, exfoliants in it, be it salt or pumice powder, it can definitely make the lather you know, a little bit scant and I don't want that. My whole thing is a big bubble right away. Like that is for me the whole point of a soap. Something that lathers really quickly, really easily. You do not have to work for it. That is why I make clay soaps because that definitely helps with the whole process. But also whenever I'm making something like this with a really, really specific purpose in mind, I change the oil ratios to make sure I still get that big bubble no matter what. So at the end of the day, regardless of what it is I put into the soaps, people are still getting the same soapy big bubble experience, which is important. Um, and I mean, that's like, that's no shade on like the Castile soap makers. That's fine. You can, that's awesome. There are a lot of people in the world that love the Castile soaps. There are a lot of people in the world that love like, the animal fat soaps and do all the things and that's great that is super awesome for me personally i like a really big bubble with a nice hard bar that has a really long you know life like it, it, it's lasting uh not the lather i mean the lather yes yeah, sure but also the bar itself and so for me this is the way that i achieve that and I actually really love this uh, variation on the recipe and this is what I will be using for my whetstone soaps uh, for a while. That said, this is not actually my whetstone soap. This is a soap for a wholesale account. This is for a uh, Tea Town Tacoma and they make awesome like screened all of the things, anything that you could ever want screened. She has such a great uh, artistic eye for all of the awesome screening things and she actually was raised in the same community that I was raised in which is super crazy because what are the odds that two people from a small town in nowhere Colorado ended up in Tacoma together but we did and that's the thing and that is a uh, day 245 the new whetstone soap and there it is the new and improved whetstone I really love how we changed the oils and the butters and it yielded a much bigger lather while still getting all of the awesome scrubbiness that you really need in a mechanic soap. So it's a total win for me. The sandalwood blend is obviously one of my favorites, except I did add a little bit of orange in this after speaking with uh, my brother about his favorite sort of scent blends. And he mentioned an orange and sandalwood that he had gotten at one point that he really liked. And I went, ooh, yes, that. So these bars, if you are interested in getting the whetstone, you can totally find them on the website at soapandclay.com. If you are interested in more soapy antics, you should subscribe to the channel. That would be awesome. We do this every day. If you're interested in becoming a wholesale account or getting a custom bar made for yourself, you know, send me a message. We can talk and do the things because that's always cool. And yeah, if you are a current subscriber in one of my sudsers, thank you so much for being 
one of the sudsers because I think that's an awesome thing for you to be and it makes me happy that you agree. So thank you for joining me for another round of 365 Days of Soap. I am out of here for the day, guys. I'll see you all again tomorrow. Bye.